Greetings in Christ Jesus, everyone. This is Bishop Daniel Thomas coming to you from Rosary Cathedral. Most of you have heard that familiar hymn, Where Charity and Love Prevail. In our current circumstances, I can think of nothing more important than promoting charity and love. Where do charity and love prevail? They prevail first in our homes, parishes, schools, neighborhoods, and communities. They prevail in our hearts, in our interaction with others, in our service to others, and in our acts of giving and generosity. This is where the charity and love of Christ prevail. In this past year, despite the challenges, uncertainty, illness, and suffering, We've seen throughout our 19 counties so many good people and good works where charity and love have prevailed. The following folks from our own diocese whose stories I am pleased to share with you now are just some examples of how charity and love prevail through mission, witness, and community. Meet Maximo Gonzalez, who in his overcoming trials and tribulation reminds us that in mission, we are all called to serve one another. My grandmother was always into the churches. It was nice going to church with her as a kid. I loved it. I got my first communion there. She even got me to go to school there. But um, I just fell off in the wrong way doing drugs, selling drugs, being around gang members. I've been in and out of the institutions since age 11. Then I turned 18, I ended up being in prison. Everybody was like, you should run to God, you should run to God. And I told them like, look, I believe in God, but I don't want to run to him because I'm in trouble. When I finally put down myself and say that I'm done, I'm tired, I did it because I wanted to in my heart. All my life I've dealt with people inside the institutions, people that they didn't care if you succeeded or not. But when you get to La Posada and you have people, wonderful people around you that's guiding you, and I mean, the resources they're giving you can help you overcome and become better, I, I ran with it. I wanted better, I wanted to do better. I like, just wanted to be better for myself, better for my kids. I always come back every Christmas and decorate the house at La Posada. I know I'm giving back to be able to help people that were in my shoes. God is greater than you could imagine, but until you are ready to completely 100% surrender to him, you'll never know his true meaning. I don't want wrong no more. All I can do now is pray, live my life the way God wants me to, and keep doing everything I can to donate my time. Meet Chloe Batara, a young woman of faith and devotion who has committed herself in witness to spreading the gospel message of Christ Jesus. I've always had this passion to be part of the church's mission to spread the gospel. In 2011, my youth minister asked me if I wanted to go to World Youth Day in Madrid, Spain. I had no idea what World Youth Day was. I didn't really understand the true presence of Jesus Christ in the Blessed Sacrament. But as each day went by, learning more about my faith, it was just something in me that made me want more. And that's kind of how I got into communications and wanting to integrate communications and the beauty of our faith together. After I graduated, I knew I wanted to work for the church, and so I work for three parishes. I run all the communications from photography to social media, and for the diocese, I am basically a voice for all the young adults. Religious life is not just for a specific group of people. The young voice is a very important part of the church. I think it's really important that the youth know that they have a place in the church and that they can bring their own experiences and their talents to the church and, and to bring us all up together. 
My fiance works as the communications coordinator for St. Mary's Parish. It's so important to have marriage rooted in Christ because this vocation of marriage is a way for us to encounter Christ through our spouse. And so we started meeting in September with Father Hoyles using um, the diocesan marriage prep program and it has been a wonderful blessing. I love working for the church and I knew that this was God's will and so uh, I, I hope and pray that through my job um, I'm able to get people to one step closer to Christ. Meet Jim and Christy O'Donnell, a couple whose call has led them to living a life of service to others in community. I think we are like some Catholics where we kind of left the uh, uh, faith a little bit. We were um, just doing the minimal things. And so it wasn't late until later in our, in our marriage that uh, something changed. I just kept hearing this, uh, Jesus calling us to do more. I used to sell cars. I always told myself the only way I would leave that job is if I could get into full-time ministry somehow. Sure enough, uh, the more I looked into the diaconate, I can see that when you're a deacon, you're somebody that's in the community, working in the community, living in the community. And um, I just felt that fit really well. We were taking a walk one day in our neighborhood and brought it on to her that I was thinking about the diaconate. I was pretty excited. Um... She'd have had me ordained right then if she wanted to. <laughs> We're just, you know, not only husband and wife, but we're best friends. And our relationship with Jesus strengthened our marriage. It strengthened our relationship together. So we knew that this was something that was going to be amazing. And she's supportive more than that. I mean, all our prayer time together, she'll help me with anything I need at the church. The community there has been more of a blessing to us. Um, so we're just hoping that we can give back to them. And it's been I think nothing but a blessing so far. Him becoming the pastoral leader, we've gotten involved in a whole other community and let them know we're, you know, we're here to, to serve and to help. And God's love for us is so great. And once you realize that, you want to do whatever you can for Him. Our faith is alive again. We're going to church. We won't miss it on Sundays. And God willing, will be ordained in September of 21. I mean, you know, if we can bring just a few people closer to God, to Jesus, then that's probably my favorite part. I'm so grateful for these folks and the countless faithful members of our diocese who daily spread the gospel message in their mission, witness, and community. Through our annual Catholic Appeal, we feed the hungry, house the homeless, heal the afflicted, teach our young people, offer hope to the disabled, foster vocations, form future priests and deacons, prepare couples for sacramental marriage, welcome the stranger, fight injustice, and promote the dignity and respect of each human person. We do these things as a response to the charity and love Christ has shared with us. We, in turn, are called to extend His charity and love to all our neighbors. As each of us has been blessed, I invite you to share your blessings and to support this year's annual Catholic Appeal with your prayers and a financial gift. We're striving for greater participation than ever in this year's ACA. Won't you help us reach our $3 million goal so that we can feed, heal, teach, and offer hope? It is together in the sharing of our blessings and generous giving to the 2021 Annual Catholic Appeal that we can continue to make our Diocese of Toledo truly a place where charity and love prevail in mission, witness, and community. In this year of St. Joseph, we entrust our annual Catholic appeal, its success, and all our efforts to St. Joseph. You have my deep gratitude and appreciation for your tremendous generosity. Thank you, and may God bless and keep you always. We 